not only he's done something for you, that's true, but he's also done something to you. And that is what we're discussing. Yeah. You're not gonna find that readily. How? Everywhere. Because it is a kind of a different angle, different angle, different point of view, that is not as popular and is not as much as discussed readily. But we found evidence that God has done not just something for us, but he's actually done something to us. Right. And that is where Win and I are gonna elaborate and we feel like opening a box of chocolate. Mm. <laughs> cookies. <laughs> cookies, Coligos, cookies, fresh biscuit. Not only what God has done for us, that that is wonderful and we, we keep discussing that. But we're going to go into this supernatural mode. Hey! Where we'll discuss what God has done to us. Hey! And believe it or not, but it's not a written show here. You know, but I tell you, if you don't get by revelation, I'm not saying you get it from me because you could hear me say it, but you got to hear. Holy Spirit has to open your ears to hear the sound of faith. Yeah. Because I, I don't just speak words, but I have substance behind these words. What is it? The substance of faith. I actually believe this. <laughs> yeah, I do. And that's the difference between reading, reading information and reading. Uh, it's the sound of faith. And actually, I really am counting on that sound to, to, do, to, do, to do something to you. Yeah. You know? And the wonderful thing about it is, you know, you don't even have to have the faith for it yourself because I can create it. Not that I create it because I cannot create anything other than what God has created in me. But what he's created in me, he's created this believing heart. Create in me a new heart, a believing heart, a clean heart. God has created, he's created in me a believing heart. And that heart is a gift. New heart is a gift. I mean, you can't make yourself new. Old man can't make nothing new. You know? Whoa. An atheist like me cannot create a uh, believer. I cannot do that. It's just because atheism only produces its own kind. Mm -hmm. so, so God had to create supernaturally in me a new heart, believing heart. And then he can... He can mm deposit in that new heart, which is the um, white skin or the, the vessel where he could put his spirit in it. And through his Holy Spirit, he keeps pouring oh, substance, yes, oh. you know. And the substance of faith is just as much of a gift as the gift of salvation. You, you, you're saved by grace, which is God's ability. Through what? Through faith. Even the believing, though, is not of yourself. Even that faith that it takes to believe what he did to you, it too is, is a gift. So so we need both, you know, <laughs> and it's all a gift. So as, as I'm speaking, the gift just keeps coming to you. And God is creating in you through the sound of faith, a believing heart. And you might not even understand. In fact, I'm often just goof off and try to make fun of your mind and your brain because it's not that well functioning anyways. 3% functionality is not exactly my idea of, of big performance, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so so you have this mind with trying to figure things by its performance. Or, uh, yeah, it's only, the mind cannot help you right now, I'm telling you right now. The, the, the brain, it does not operate. Oh! It, it operates on 
Let me see it, yeah. I'll believe it. Or let me experience it, I'll, I'll get it. If, if I feel it, like if pain goes through me, if I see a nail go through me, then I believe, then I'm crucified. But if there's no nails and blood and pain and, you know, suffocating and suffering, then I'm not crucified. So that's how the natural mind will say. So if the word says that they, they, your, your old you is crucified with Christ, your old man or your old self, your old nature, there's no way for your natural mind to agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And please don't stress it, you know, because you'll have nothing but burn circuits. There's, there's, no, there's no help from the mind on, the, on that one. But the mind will cooperate eventually with what you believe in your heart. So your heart will dominate. So you can't even push yourself to believe it now with your willpower. Willpower is useless when it comes to, you can't choose to believe. It's the other way around. What you believe chooses what you're gonna do. You know, it's like this, opposite. Secular man, natural man, chooses what they're gonna believe and with his will overrides what they believe and make themselves believe what they know is good for them so they, they make themselves believe and they will succeed that way. But Christian faith is the opposite. Even in the world, I think ultimately what you believe runs your life, but that's beside the point. But I know in Christianity, so yeah, what you believe rules your will, and your will goes, I'll do it. If I believe it, I'll do it. The moment you believe something becomes yours, and you, it activates every power, every propensity inside you, and you go after it, you know. And when you don't believe something, you're trying to make it, trying to do it, and it's a drag, and it's not working that way. So, so the glory of that is that through the sound of faith, faith comes by hearing. So, it's the sound of faith. You hear it, like the rustle of the wind, the rustle of the leaves, and then the wind comes. You hear the, the sound, and then the wind blows. You feel the wind. The sound of faith comes and begins to do things inside you. And faith oh, comes that. through the sound, creative sound with this with the voice God spoke. Boo, let it be, you know, and God creates. So the same way God's creating in us, right now, in this atmosphere, He's creating a new heart. He's creating uh, what He already did, He is creating it in you. He's Whoa! imparting it oh, to you. Jesus. He is He's, you know, um, you, activating it in you, you know. Mm. And if you want to call it a process, that's the process. Keep, keep hearing, keep believing, um, keep realizing, <clears throat> keep, keep, wow, you know. And but ultimately, after you've done the process of whatever it takes, and however long it takes, you're gonna arrive to this thing. It was a gift from the get-go. God already made you that way. He already, on the cross, He crucified the old you. We're going to go over this in more particular when we read Romans 6, verse 6 and some of the other places. But you'll, you'll get it. Oh, look, this is exciting. <laughs> this is so exciting. Because it's not the work of the flesh. It's not the self-power, the self-will. This is God. And one thing about this is when you know the truth, not only set you free, set you free from pride. Because you're not gonna take glory for yourself or give somebody else glory who taught you his methods and then, oh, he's so great, he taught me. He's the, well, God uses humans, but really it's God himself who sets us free. And sets us free from sin from the control, dominion, authority, power, rule, world of it. He takes us out of that world, puts us in himself. You know. <laughs> and ooh, so good. Oh yes, Lord. Shabbat. And then when it's done, who do you give glo glory? God. 